Now to use that slug URL, I'll quit the interactive shell here and bring my development server back up with run server. And then we got a couple of things to do. For one, we'll have to tweak this get absolute URL method, but we also have to change URLs py. We no longer expect to get an ID here, instead we expect a slug here. And we can use the slug um, transformer here you learned about earlier in the course in front of that. Now I'm using slug as a name here, hence in views py I should accept slug as a name here. And I now want to find my book by slug. So instead of checking the primary key and comparing it to id, I want to check the slug field. So this is the attribute name in the model and make sure that the value stored there is equal to the slug I'm getting here as a parameter. So right side of the equal sign is the parameter, left side is the attribute name in the model, which also is slug. So this is an adjustment we need to make here. Now I want to make sure that the correct links are generated for this page. And since there we're using get absolute URL, I have to tweak get absolute URL. And instead of passing in the ID as a value for the dynamic path segment, I now want to pass in self.slug and use the slug. With that, if we save everything and reload localhost 8000, we got those more search engine friendly URLs being generated and they also work as they should. And this is how we could use such a extra field for identifying data instead of the primary key, how we can then also update that field whenever we save. And hence, this is another important pattern or another interesting aspect about models, which you should be aware of, which you might need quite a lot when building your own websites. And therefore, I definitely also wanted to cover this here. Now to conclude this part about the slug field, which we added, I want to dive back into configuring those fields. We see a couple of options in action already, like max length, null equals true and the default value. Now for the slug field, we could use another option here, which could help us with performance. Keep in mind that in views py, we are basically finding a book by slug. We're using the slug attribute to find a book. Now you can find items, you can find data entries by any field you want. Any field defined in your model can be used to find elements. You can even combine them as you learned when we learned about filter. But if you have certain fields which you use a lot, like the slug, which we will use every time someone visits the page for a single book, then you can improve the performance of that find operation by making that field a so-called index. And for that, you can add the db index option and set this to true. And this will add a so-called database index for that field. Now, database indexes are a technical detail of databases, SQL and NoSQL databases know this concept. And it basically means that the database will save the values in that column a bit more efficiently or in a way that makes searching them a bit more efficient. And that's some behind the scenes stuff which you don't need to know. All you need to know is that creating such an index for a field can make searching that field quicker. So if you have a field which gets used a lot for finding data, like in our case slug, which we know to find books, then we might want to consider turning it into an index. The ID field, which we get out of the box, automatically has an index, otherwise fields don't have an index. And you might think, why don't we make every field an index if it speeds up the search performance? The problem is that creating an index on its own decreases performance. Because whenever you add a new entry to your database, it needs to be added to the index. And if all your fields are indexes, that adds up. So having a few fields as indexes is no problem, but you definitely shouldn't turn all your fields into indexes. Really just the ones which you use a lot for querying. And that's the case here for slug. So there setting this as an index makes sense. 
You could also set this to be your primary key if you don't want to use the ID field for that, but I will use the ID field instead. I will not override it because we already have the ID field for existing data and so on. But you could set your slug as your main primary key if you know that you don't want that extra ID field. So therefore you could do that, but I'll not do it here. And that's it for now regarding those options and those fields. As explained throughout the module already, you can always dive into the official reference to learn about all available fields and all available options, but you already learned about a couple of key fields and options throughout this section, and you're going to see more fields and options throughout the rest of the course. Therefore, now to finally conclude this long module, but it is an important one, but to finally conclude it, let's talk about aggregation methods because those can also often be important and useful.